CIA had originally planned LSD to be uh, uh, used as a uh, truth serum or a control device. They wanted to control the population, uh, but uh, instead young people started to experiment with themselves. They would deprogram themselves from the mainstream culture, but then reprogram themselves with their own value system. And uh, so the whole CIA scenario backfired. They did it with, with such a sense of humor that people couldn't figure out what's their angle. You know, what do they want to get out of this? Do they want money? Do they want to sell something? And, you know, they just wanted to spread joy and the sense of, uh, of healthy rebellion against a constricting um, uh, civilization. The free speech movement started because they wanted to, they didn't want CIA recruiters on campus uh, because the, um, uh, the CIA was really behind the war in Vietnam. And so they, they felt it was not appropriate that they should try and recruit students. It started out as almost an adversarial relationship because the political activists thought that the hippies were irresponsible. You know, there was a war going on and they're just smoking dope in the park. Uh, but they came to realize that uh, smoking dope in the park was a political act of civil disobedience against an unjust law. At the same time, the hippies thought that the political activists were just uh, playing into the hands of the administration uh, by protesting this war. But then the hippies began to see that the political activists were right too. They could see that there was a connection between getting arrested for smoking pot in this country and dropping napalm on kids on the other side of the world and burning them alive. Uh, San Francisco became the ki a kind of Mecca and there was this, a sort of um, pilgrimage toward the West um, and, there, and it was like young, a generation of pioneers who uh, went West without killing a single Indian along the way. The hippie had become such a media uh, uh, phenomenon. So they, went, they had a march called the Death of Hippie. They wanted to be called Free Americans, which, you know, a sweet little old lady wasn't like to say, get a haircut, you free American. It was just in the air, this feeling of being like a blade of grass growing through the concrete, you know, uh, and suddenly seeing the light and seeing others who were sharing in this kind of thing. You didn't know exactly what to call it, but you knew you were breaking through something that had uh, uh, been holding you down. He was a, a natural leader and uh, he told me I wasn't the leader because I didn't urge people to do things. Uh, but he had a charisma about him. When I first met Abby, I, I told him how much uh, he reminded me of Lenny Bruce. You know, he had this spontaneous, fearless wit. And, and you know, he said, wow, really? He said, Lenny was my god. And so this kind of uh, uh, started an instant friendship with us. It worked. It became um, the headlines in Chicago papers that were like, uh, yipes, the yippies are coming. So it was a myth that became a reality. At first there were 20 protesters indicted and eight cops. And then they, I was one of the 20, but then they wanted to have the, the scales with justice balanced. So they just limited it to eight uh, defendants. And um, the trial was um, a showcase for, um, to, uh, to try and and display the difference between mainstream America and uh, countercultural war protesters. He was a target, you know, it came out in, in even in the Nixon tapes. Uh, so he, he wanted to be an organizer, that's what he wanted. He wanted to start a school for organizing and, um, and you know, when, you, when you're in prison it's hard to organize. He wanted to be free and he wanted to be free not for its own sake but also so he could you know, um, continue to rabble rouse. The, the, the lesson was, and that I learned, what the yippies and the pranksters and underground press, what it all had in common was our culture was our politics.